They want to take away my freedom because I will never let them take away your freedom. It's very simple. They want to silence me because I will never let them silence you. They want you silent. Overnight, Trump's plane was parked in West Palm Beach, Florida. Sources say the former president is expected to surrender to New York. They're not coming after me. They're coming after you. And I just happen to be standing in their way. And I will never be moved. ways from Sunday of getting back at you. You called your opponent an existential threat uh, on a call a week ago. You said it's time to put Trump in the bullseye. Breaking news, this is an image that will be in the history books. Lawyers for former president say the jury's guilty. Let me tell you a little something, man. These brothers running around hard. Head head. They get a little jealous, you know what I'm saying? Just like that. You know, they try to bring you down with them. But yo, Chuck, you got to tell them just like that. that, that. So it's time to leave. Hey there, I hope you're all doing well. A while back, I purchased this Kenwood THD75A from a popular retailer, and I'm not going to give the name of the business because I don't want this to turn into some complaint video, and I also don't want this one frustrating experience I had overshadow all the previous positive ones because it's a retailer that I like to buy from, and I've purchased several radios from them as well as a variety of parts and accessories. But maybe this experience that I'm going to share with you might help some of you if you run into a similar situation. But when I purchased the radio from their online store, there is an option to select a Mars mod and have them do the work. And on this particular radio, what that involves is taking it apart and removing a resistor from the circuit board. And for those of you watching that have done a Mars mod, you'll know that the components are very small and it's really easy to make a mistake. And I've mentioned this in a past episode that my dexterity is not as great as it used to be. So whenever I have the option of outsourcing something like modifying a circuit board, then I'll go with that. It's just too difficult for me anymore to do that kind of work. And I don't want to make a mistake that results in me owning a very expensive paperweight. So I purchased the radio along with the mod. And once I got it in the mail, I unboxed it, programmed it with the frequencies that I wanted. And then I proceeded to confirm if the mod worked or not. And after testing it with a dummy load, I discovered that it didn't transmit on the frequency range I anticipated it should have. So I reached out to another amateur radio operator who has the same radio and performed this mod on his D75. And after some discussion and troubleshooting, we concluded that perhaps the mod done by the retailer was incorrect. However, the only way for me to confirm that is to open the radio up, inspect the circuit board, and verify which resistor they removed. And in speaking with the other ham who did the mod, the correct resistor on the circuit board that needs to be removed is R2. 
And so I opened up the radio, I inspected the board, and I could see that R1 was removed instead of R2. And I reached out to the retailer, I explained the situation, and that I believed it was R2 that should have been removed. And I also stated I was willing to pay for the cost of the shipping of the radio back and would pay them to solder R1 back on and remove R2. After explaining all this to a customer service rep, they reached out to a technician, and unfortunately, that technician doubled down on insisting the work was done correctly. And in their response to me, they even attached a photo of the circuit board verifying R1 was removed, which I thought was a strange counterargument because I'm not disputing the fact that they removed R1. I can see that for myself when I inspected the circuit board. I was questioning, however, if they should have removed resistor R2 instead. And when they emailed me back, and I printed it out so I could read it to you, their position was that I should keep in mind with any modification, these are frequency ranges, and we are unable to guarantee the user can hit every frequency or the performance of the frequencies they are able to access. I hope this helps. Well, it doesn't help because that's just word salad for we're doubling down on insisting the mod was done correctly. I'm not asking you to guarantee anything. I'm just saying I've got another amateur radio operator who did this mod on the same exact radio, and they were able to achieve these desired results by removing this resistor. I would like to send the radio back to you, solder R1 back on, remove R2. But we couldn't seem to agree on that, so... Um, I was kind of disappointed in their inability to resolve what I thought was a pretty minor issue, but that wasn't a hill that I had the energy or the patience to die on, so I just decided that I would do the mod myself. So I requested a refund, I gave them the radio back, and then I purchased another one from a different retailer. And in the past, I could get away with doing a mod with a magnifying lamp, but as shaky as my hands are, you know, that wasn't going to cut it. So I started looking at buying a digital microscope so I could get a better view of how close I was to the resistor. And so I didn't have much of a gauge on how much something like that would cost, so I started looking on Amazon, and eventually I found one for about 100 bucks. And so I'll leave a link to that in the description below in case you're ever in a jam someday and you find yourself needing to procure an affordable digital microscope. Now that I have the backstory of how I got into the situation out of the way, I'll cover how to disassemble the radio. It's pretty straightforward, and I'll also include a brief video of the circuit board when I had it under the digital microscope. Briefly, I'll review the disassembly steps. So I'm going to remove the battery, the antenna, as well as these rotary knobs, those pull off, and then underneath that, the SMA nut. And then there's four screws that fasten the aluminum back to the radio's body. And then once I remove those, I'm going to remove the front cover of the body, unhook the push-to-talk cover from the body as well, and then I'll lay the cover on its face. And when I open it up, you'll see a ribbon cable that connects the buttons to the circuit board. And you can disconnect that ribbon cable if you want, but you don't really have to. It's not necessary. Okay, I'll start disassembling the radio. I'll probably fast forward some of the parts of this video because it's going to be pretty boring, and I know you probably don't care about this. Part, but I'll cover it anyway for those that are interested. But I'm going to remove the battery, the antenna, and like I said, these knobs pull off and they're pretty easy to remove. And then you've got a couple of nuts in here. What I like to do is take a pair of needle nose pliers and put the tips of those pliers in these little grooves here and unscrew it that way. Seems to work a little bit better than jamming a uh, flathead screwdriver in there and trying to loosen it on the first go around. And that should be enough to get this going.
There we go. Okay, so I need a Phillips head bit to take the belt clip off. And I'll take these little screws on the bottom off. And this part just slips off on the top. And I should be able to just kind of pull this up and basically slide it out from the cover. Probably just pull that off too. Okay, and I've successfully removed the body from the cover. There's the ribbon that I was talking about. You can remove that. I haven't tried to remove it. looks a little bit intricate for me, but uh, that's basically how you uh, get that out. I've disassembled the D75 and I've got it under an electronic microscope and the resistor I want to remove is R2. And here's what that looks like. So it's going to be this one right here and that's the resistor that I'll desolder and remove from the circuit board. Okay, so full disclosure that took me about an hour to remove that resistor and that's not something that would have taken me as long in the past but uh, I had to take several breaks in between my hands were shaking I was sweating quite a bit and I was very worried that I was gonna turn this radio into an expensive paperweight so um, definitely couldn't have done it without the electronic microscope because I was able to pick up where I left off after my breaks but once uh, I got the resistor removed that was the hard part and I reassembled the radio and if you do this mod on your radio what you'll want to do is go back into the menu and you want to perform a reset and that's pretty much it and so after the mod and the reset you should be able to transmit on 136 to 174 megahertz uh, 216 to 235 and 410 to 470 megahertz and after completing the mod, I didn't notice any performance issues with the radio, and it does appear to be functioning as expected. So anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.